Physics of Scattering, Absorption, and Emission due to gas and aerosols. The scattering and absorption of radiation by gas molecules and aerosols contribute to the reduction of the solar and terrestrial radiation that goes through the atmosphere. For example, this is the Earth and this is the atmospheric layer, shortwave radiation that passes through the atmospheric layer would be scattered or absorbed by the gas and aerosol as well as the long wave radiation that comes from the earth which would also be affected by these gases and aerosols. The effect of these gases and aerosols on the radiation depends on three properties. The first is the intensity of the radiation, the second is the concentration of the gases and particles, and the third is the effectiveness of the gases and particles in absorbing or scattering because some gases and particles are able to absorb and scatter radiation more effectively than others. The equation for gases or particles that reflects the effect of the gases or particles on radiation is this equation and this equation. For gases or particles, the reduction in radiation is equal to the intensity of radiation multiplied by k lambda, which is the scattering or absorption efficiency of the gas or particle, times n, which is the number of particles per unit volume of air, which is synonymous with concentration, times sigma, which is the aerial cross-section of each particle, or the size of the particle, multiplied by ds, which is just the length that the radiation has to pass through. For gases, the equation is similar as the above, but the parameters used in the equation are slightly different, where instead of n, it is rho and r, instead of sigma, it is r. So for rho, it is the density of air, and for r, it is the mass of the gas per unit mass of air. K small k lambda is the mass absorption coefficient. This equation reflects, these two equations reflects the linear proportionality of the three properties on scattering and absorption. The contributions of each gas and particles are additive, which means that we can simply add the contribution of the gas and particles in the atmosphere, the individual gas and particles in the atmosphere, like for example the scattering and absorption of gas 1 and the scattering and absorption of gas 2 and the absorption and scattering of gas 3 to add up to the overall scattering and absorption of radiation due to those gases in this one parameter. Aside from that, we can also add in the scattering and absorption due to just the scattering separately and the absorption separately to become the overall parameter k lambda extinction, which simplifies the process of accounting for the gases and particles in the atmosphere on the reduction of solar radiation and terrestrial radiation in the atmosphere. Now we look into the scattering phenomenon in the atmosphere due to gases and particles. In the figure on the left, we see the y-axis is the size of the gas and particles, while the x-axis is the wavelength of the radiation or light. Here we see that if the size of the particles and gases increase, scattering will be more evident. And this occurs concurrently with the wavelength. For example, if a molecule, air molecule, is of this size and the light is of this wavelength, then there is negligible scattering. For the same wavelength, 
but with a bigger molecule there will be considerable scattering. That means that scattering depends on two parameters, the wavelength and the size. Let's use Rayleigh scattering as an example for a few sizes of gases and particles, as can be seen on the right of this figure. For very small molecules, we see that the backscattering and the forward scattering to be negligible. But as the size increase at to 0 0.1 micrometer, we see that there is more forward scattering than backscattering, which causes the general scattering in the atmosphere. And for much larger molecules or particles, then we see a considerable forward scattering with respect to the back scattering, which causes a general considerable scattering of the radiation. In the previous slide, we see the effect of wavelength and radius of gas on scattering, but we don't look at the absorption capability of those gases and its effect on scattering. Now, if a gas has no absorption capabilities, then it will scatter the radiation efficiently as compared to gases with more absorption capabilities. For example, for Mi equals to zero, we see that the scattering efficiency of that gas would be high and low, and it oscillates to a mean of two. And it would change quite rapidly in the size parameter, small in the small range of the size parameter, and it dampens in the larger part of the size parameter range. But if the gas has a high absorption capability, then the oscillatory behavior would be non-evident, where it would scatter the radiation less efficiently and it would approach a smaller scattering efficiency than the one with no absorption. There are two scattering regimes. One is the scattering regime in general and the other is the geometric optics regime. For a certain size parameter, it would cause the radiation to be scattered in the geometrics optic regime. And we can see that in the previous slide where the geometrics optic scattering regime are applicable for large particles such as raindrops, drizzle, and crowd droplets, but again it depends on the wavelength as well. I should add here the definition of the dimensionless size parameter x. It is equals to 2 pi r over lambda, where r is the radius of the gas or particle and lambda is the wavelength of radiation. Here we see an example of the scattering phenomenon in the atmosphere where at the top of the picture in the atmosphere we see the blue light being scattered due to the air molecules in the Rayleigh scattering regime. At the bottom here, we see scattering done by bigger particles like aerosols, which scatters the radiation even more. As was seen in the previous slide, we know that absorption affects scattering. It affects scattering by damping the oscillatory behavior in the Mi region, or the Mi scattering regime. At very large sizes of the dimensionless size parameter x of more than 1, k approaches 2. But this k varies widely, as can be seen by this oscillatory behavior. But when 
the absorption increases, then this oscillatory behavior becomes less evident. But when absorption is very high, then the scattering will become lower and the oscillatory behavior would also disappear with a lower scattering efficiency in value. Now every time radiation interacts with matter, it is absorbed, scattered, or emitted by that matter, such as gas or particles. And it is in the form of discrete packets or photons. How much energy is there in a photon? The energy content of a photon is can be calculated using this equation, E equals to hf, where h is the Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the power of negative 4 joule second, and f is the frequency.